Today I'm going to be sharing my newest acrylic painting, my house finches and coral, and showing you how I used my own bird feeder to get the reference photos for these guys. Step one, attract some sky chickens that I can take reference photos of. That won't do. We're gonna have to head over to Wild Birds Unlimited and restock on some bird seed. All set, now we wait. I got so many good photos of these guys while I was out there shooting. The one that I ended up going with were this were, was, Grammar is not what you're here for. This pair of house finches. Before we get started, if you are members over on Patreon, make sure to head over where you've got the two hour version of this demonstration if you wanna follow along with me there. If you are unfamiliar with Patreon, for as little as $4 a month, you get access to all of my longer tutorials. I have a new one every single week, and when you sign up, you get instant access to all of my past tutorials. There are over 200 available for you there in multiple mediums. If you're not sure if Patreon will be a fit for you, head over to my Patreon video library where you can see everything I've got available along with the free two hour colored pencil demonstration. For this one, I started by painting the canvas just a solid light teal. I'm going to use my airbrush to create a sort of vignette look. I want a very blotchy but soft background for this. This one is going to go, my plan is, hanging it next to my own reef tank. So I wanted colors that really work for my office. You guys know me, teal is the way to go. If you've been following me over on MeWe, it's like Facebook, if Facebook were still good, you guys have seen this drawing that I did initially in Photoshop. With that, I designed it on my Wacom tablet, drew everything out, and then I was able to use a white charcoal pencil and my projector and project it onto the canvas. Now the bonus of working this way is it makes it so that I don't have any eraser marks on my work. I did all of the erasing on my Wacom tablet and in Photoshop. You can do the same thing if you're sketching on another piece of paper and then you can use either tracing and transfer paper or a projector to project the image cleanly that you've already drawn onto your canvas. It, it really, really helps if you are struggling with eraser marks and lines not erasing all the way. So once that was done, I'm going to, going to go ahead and start painting the little house finches. This is the male here. Now in my initial layers, I'm not super worried about my colors or anything like that. I'm just blocking in my general details about where everything is going to go. I call this my mapping out stage. Now the brush that I'm using here, this is a rake brush, a really small rake brush. If I push hard, it just works like a normal tack on bristled filter. But as I use really, really light brush strokes, you'll see how it looks very streaky. I'm getting a whole lot of little brush strokes in one brush. That's a rake brush. Those are really, really helpful when you're painting fur, feathers, grass, anything like that. Going through, I'm just mainly using unbleached titanium white here. We'll throw some brown in there, get everything a little bit darker. I want to let some of that background teal color show through. This is going to help her to really feel like she's a part of the scene. One of the challenges in this painting is making it look like they're not in the sky, not like my original photo or on my bird feeders, but underwater. I've got to, got to pull that glow, that underwater look into this. So whenever you're using multiple reference photos, you want to make sure that you're pulling your background colors into those subjects so that the subjects feel like they were a part of the original scene and not just stickers cut out from one scene and put on another. Really building up my values here. I need to get all of this a lot darker so that when I come on top with the lights, it really stands out. One of the biggest tips I can give you for acrylic paint, for any art really, a lot of people get worked up over the color. Like here, which brown would you use? It doesn't matter. The color just is not that important. What you wanna focus on, if you are trying to make your work look more realistic and that's something that you struggle with, focus on your values. Get your darks dark enough, your lights light enough. That is what will make all the difference in the world in your work. Get an accurate drawing and your values. 
So if you ever catch yourself thinking, if I just knew what color that artist was using, that would make my work better. Probably not. That is probably not what you're having trouble with. Focus on those values. And one of the things with values too, it's very scary to get those darks really dark and those, those light colors really light. It, it feels safer to make everything more mid-range. That doesn't look as good. Get Really hype up the contrast. And one of the things that you can do, if you've painted something and you're thinking, well, should I hype up the contrast? Would it look better? Take a photo and use any photo editor on your phone, computer, anything you want. You can use a lot of free apps for this and adjust the contrast. Hype up the contrast and see if that makes it look better or your, your highlights. I'm a huge fan of the app Snapseed by Google and that one they do have for iPhone users as well. That lets you adjust so much and you can do it right there on your phone and decide, will it look better if I make my brights brighter, my darks darker, or just the darks and not the, the lights. You can play around with that and get an idea. And then once you decide if it looks better, if you make those adjustments, go to your painting and make those adjustments there. This red feather star is not going to work out. I'm going to end up having to paint over this. This feather star, I painted it in some of my other paintings and I loved it. So I'm thinking, of course I want to include that here. I really wanted something red to balance out the male house finch. It didn't work out. I was having a really hard time as I moved forward and once I painted the leather coral that's going to go behind her, this bird was just blending into that background. Horribly so. So I'm going to come back through and repaint that. And that's the cool thing with acrylics. And one of the reasons that I like working in acrylics so much when I do surreal work, if I change my mind like that, where I'm thinking that it just isn't working, I'm not in love with it, repaint it, not a problem. Another tip I have for you, this is something that I do for myself. Look at a painting every time you paint something. If you're thinking, should I leave it? Should I change it? It's really easy to almost get lazy and convince yourself, no, nah, it's fine. I'm just going to leave it when it would be a lot better if you went ahead and make, made a certain adjustment. Look at it as if I hang this on my wall, which is what I'm going to do with this one. If I hang this on my wall, is that going to irritate me? Is that one thing that I'm kind of thinking I should change? Is it going to bother me? If the answer is yes, that's a pretty good indication. Go ahead and make that, that adjustment. But that's the great thing with acrylics. You're never even going to know I made that change. Well, you guys know because I just pointed it out to a whole bunch of people. But the average viewer wouldn't know that I had to change that, that I just wasn't in love with what it looked like. So sometimes when you come up with an initial sketch, which I did here, everything looked fine. The problem that I ran into was really based on detailing and color, which was not in that sketch, where you can see now she's really blending in. She's just very similar to that finger leather coral. And I love that coral. That part was one and I was not changing. I mean, I have to adjust values and such, but I really, really loved it. So what could I do instead to make her stand out more? And my solution to that was to repaint that feather star. It was almost like it had too much detail. I needed something a little bit more simple. It looked like feathers all on its own. It just wasn't a good balance. So make the change. And in acrylics, that is so easy to do. Now in this painting, I wanna create a lot of depth so that it does feel like it's underwater. I would prefer it to look more like birds underwater with the coral than coral out of water with birds. So with this, I am going to be airbrushing a lot of my turquoise paint, the same color I used on my background. I'm gonna be airbrushing this to push this coral back. So right now I can be really, really light, really bright, overly bold on these colors it's not going to stay this way. My goal is just to start creating the form of the corals so that I can then use the airbrush to push it back, but it will create a lot of depth in doing that. Now notice how my brush strokes are really smooth. When I am blending that, everything's coming out smooth. It's my details, super refined. It's not all bumpy. That is because of the canvas that I chose. I went with a really smooth canvas. This is the Fredericks Blue Label Canvas. Just for transparency, they did provide me with this canvas for this painting. I would have gone with this either way, so it made no difference for me there, but just so you guys know that. But anyway, when you're painting, you want to go, if you're going with this style, it will be much easier for you to use a canvas that is very, very smooth. If you're working on something that is too rough, even a Fredericks canvas, you can use really rough canvases. So it's not an issue of rough is always bad, smooth is always good. It's an issue of using the right type of canvas for the type of painting that you are wanting to do. And in this case, I need a lot of detail. I need a lot of smooth blending. So a smooth canvas is going to be the best choice for me. If I were working on, let's say even a Fredericks red label canvas or something with a, a bit more tooth, 
I would be struggling to, to get this very smooth. So if you are an acrylic artist and you find that you have a hard time getting these smooth, tiny details or getting your blending for your backgrounds or at your, any of your brush strokes really smooth, they're coming out bumpy, that's probably the canvas. There's a very good chance it's the canvas. And with acrylics, acrylics are, are a bit of a challenge because of the way that they dry so fast. They can be hard to blend anyway. You don't wanna make your life more difficult by working on the wrong canvas for the style of painting that you're, you're doing. See all this little detail here, how smooth that is? Really, really easy on a smooth canvas. So for this coral, I'm just going to draw out the branches first and then we'll glaze the aqua color over it. We'll have to get a lot more shadows in there as well. And here's where I'm using that turquoise color with my airbrush paint and really pushing a lot of this black back. And then I've got some black paint in addition to that for the deeper shadows where I'm mixing it together. It's not just straight black paint, it's the black mixed with the turquoise there. And see how it pushes all of that back here, I'm still fussing over that bird thinking, no, I can save it. The, the feather star is fine. I'm not going to have to repaint that. And I just need to do some more shading on her. No, it, it's not going to work. She's just not standing out enough. It, I, I just have to accept it and move on and repaint it. So here we've got the little details. The fun thing with coral, depending on the lighting, you can make it any color you want. If I wanted this specific type of coral to be red, that works too. They come in red. They come in most colors, and that's going to be the case with so many of the coral you paint. So if you're working on something and you just know orange would look really good in one spot, you can take any type of coral and make it orange, and it's probably going to work out okay. Throwing some bubbles in there. Gives it that nice sparkly look. And this is where I realized we're, we're done messing with that feather star. You've got to go, buddy. So we painted in black and then I redrew. I took my white charcoal pencil, drew in my Montipora. I wanted the same color. I really want to balance out that red tone from the male house finch. So we're going to paint that in and I'm letting the black paint work for me as a part of the shadow. No reason to repaint shadows. Just let the background show through. Now here, leaving it solid red like this, it felt, well, pink at this point, but it felt like it was pulling my attention off the canvas. So I'm going to take some of the finger leather coral that's behind this Montipora and put it in front, just at the bottom corner. And this really helped balance the painting off. So when I stand at a distance and look at it on my own wall, I'm not being pulled off the canvas from that one area. So I'm just gonna paint those in exactly like I did the previous areas. Starting to glaze some color, tinting that, getting highlights and shadows. Now right now, if you stood at a distance and looked at this, all you see is that red coral that the bird is sitting on. So that's obviously not going to stay. We don't want it to stay quite that bright. We need to tone some of that down and make it feel like it's in the water as well. Now I'm gonna do my highlights on the bird. I'm just gonna do them with the unbleached titanium white. I think that's mixed with titanium white as well, but I'm gonna do it all one color and then I can come and glaze or tint shadows, tint the color as I need later on. It makes it easier than sitting there going, okay, this part's in shadow, that should be a bluish tint. I don't even need to worry about it. All I've gotta do right now is get that detail in and then I can glaze a translucent color. So I thin my paint out with water to get it more translucent. And then of course using paint that is translucent anyway, and I can tint that color. It just makes it a lot easier than trying to mix the perfect color for every given space. Glazing is definitely our friend. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm glazing my teal color over portions of that coral. It's translucent. You can still see the, the detailing that I had done, the reds, the, the dots. You can see that through it, but it tones it down. It pushes it back. He feels like he's more in the water now. I've got a few more highlights on this guy. glazing a little bit of orange. But see, as I glaze that, you can still see all of the detail. I'm just tinting the color. And they do make mixing mediums for, or glazing mediums you can use for glazing. I normally just prefer water. The glazing mediums tend to make the paint dry faster. It can be harder to blend things out. It can make your paint a little goopy. More often than not, I'm just gonna use water for glazing. Same thing on this guy. I'm going to make these brights way too bright, but we'll be toning those down when we glaze over it. Last step, airbrush some rays of light coming through the water 
And this made a huge difference in the overall feel of the piece. Like it completely changed the atmosphere. Few more bubbles and we are done with that one. Again, if you want to follow along with this painting, I've got the two hour version along with the reference photos over at Patreon. If you are not already, make sure to follow me over on MeWe. It's like Facebook when Facebook was good. It is such a better platform. Really good for our business because if you post something that's for sale, they don't kill it in the algorithm like your followers will actually see it, which is kind of amazing. But if you want to follow my personal account, you will get to see all of my random critter photos like these here. I've also been letting people, if you want to use my red eye tree frog photos in your own artwork, you're welcome to do that as well. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, that'll help you to keep up to date with all of my new art videos every single week. Don't forget to click on the bell notification icon because YouTube does not notify any, anyone anymore when new videos go up. I've also got an email newsletter that I send out once a week with updates on any new live streams coming and whatever videos went up. 